All right, today is about rehabbing your hip flexors. Now, tricky topic this one. Many people get it wrong, and many people just don't do it. If you're one of those people who have a definite hip flexor strain or a hip flexor injury, maybe you've done even a tear, or you've got simply a tendinopathy or a weakness in the actual hip flexor, so psoas, hip flexor, not your quad, but in your hip flexor, then I've got some really easy strengthening progressions to go from when you're really injured to right through to getting it right for running. So all you'll need is a couple of things. A small band like that, like a mini band, and then a very skinny power band, depending how strong you are, but I would start with a skinny power band for when you're doing some progressive stuff. So first thing, this is all about strengthening rehab. So don't not worrying about the mobility side of things, that's a separate issue. So if you're doing your hip flexor stretches and you're stretching it out and you're doing all sorts of things for that, that's great. This is all about strengthening. So I would start off, especially when you're acutely injured, I would start off with the isometrics. Now, they may seem really silly, but it's really important to try and get the actual tone up on that and endurance in the hip flexor before you start loading up concentrically or dynamically moving the muscle through range. So your first hip flexor, say we'll take my left one, my first hip flexor exercise is gonna be the isometric. Now what I'll do is get yourself up into 90 degrees and simply work on trying to maintain that at 90 degrees resisting here. I find this is the best one to start with because you can add on as much pressure as you like. If you start off with a band, which I'll show you in a minute, sometimes it can just be too much load. So even for some people, just holding their leg up like that is enough, they feel it already. So maybe that's enough for you to do, just holding that. But if you find that's okay, but putting a bit of load on you start feeling it, then, then what you've got to try and do is resist as much load by trying to bring your knee effectively towards your hip, all right, or towards your shoulder like that, and then resisting it here, and how much you resist, you just gotta try and keep it in place. So you basically, what I call wind it up, meaning push your knee that way, and I'm gonna push this way, sort of like a co-contraction, until you start feeling it just about to get sore, but no more. Okay, so you really feel it. And this would go for at least 10 seconds. I'd be aiming for trying to get to 30 seconds. So whatever pressure you need, to get to 30 seconds without overcooking it through here. And I would start in that position there. That's the best one to do. All right, that's your isometric entry level thing. Now, if you want to make that more of a functional type of movement, because sometimes hip flexor issues are about the pelvis being a little bit out of kilter. Maybe you've got strength on one side and weakness or tightness on the other, and it's either overloading the hip flexor or it's getting weak. So what you can do is do a push-pull type movement which helps you get a little bit more balance in your pelvis. So in this position here, like what we call tabletop, is you then go, okay, same again with the isometric here, but then on this side, push outwards there. So I'm using my posterior chain on my right, okay? So I'm using glute, hammy on this side to push my knee that way. I'm gonna push that way. And on this side, I'm gonna pull up. But what I'm trying to do is keep the two together, okay? So I'm gonna try and push and pull. I'm gonna go as hard as I can, again, mindful of this, hard as I can in that position, and try and hold it for 10, and then you swap around. Now this gives this one a bit of a rest. So then you push with your back here, which then switches off this, gives it that relief. So you can stay in this position and work on this side. And this also gives you a bit of a benchmark to say, well, if my left one is injured, well, what's my right one like? And then you're gonna be trying to get your left like your right over time, then you know your isometric strength is up to speed. So those are your first sort of two. Now, what you can do to advance that, if you find that pushing, you know, it's just not enough, you can then go to a band, and what you do, pretty similar sort of thing, but then this one you don't even need to push. And this will sort of advance you into some eccentric work. So the band just goes on your feet, and then what you do is come up into your tabletop again, all right? And then say I'm gonna work my left hip flexor, I'm gonna try and keep this one here and resist I'm gonna straighten this out, and then the more I straighten it, the more load goes on. So that might be enough load for me. I might go a little bit further, there's a wee bit more load. If I get right down the ground without this knee sort of coming this way, I've gotta try and hold it there, and there's my isometric load for here, okay? So I can vary the load, depending on how much band straightening, or sort of stretching I do here, 
will directly affect how much load I feel here. Okay, so that's a really nice one to progress the simple isometric pushing to maybe using a band. And the good thing about that is these bands can go harder and harder and harder. So this band's a very light little yellow one, but I can still feel that activating through here. You just gotta make sure you don't overcook it and make this too heavy, and then go and strain the hip flexor you're gonna try and strengthen. So that's a really good, nice sort of isometric one to do as an addition or progression. Once you've got the isometric thing sorted, then you need to go to eccentric. Eccentric meaning strengthening or on the way sort of down or the way that it's sort of lengthening, okay? So if you imagine, if I'm on my back, this is concentric from hip flexor, that's eccentric. Now how do I train that with resistance? Just that movement, okay? This is how you do it. Grab your band again into here now this is probably an easy way of doing it because it gets less and less and less as you go down. You come up with two feet, come up like that, straighten like the isometric, now you then lengthen that down like that. So you're moving dynamically through range. This one you may find you can go to a he much heavier band than you were doing with the isometric because you're only holding an, iso holding an isometric there for a second and then going down. So it gets easier and easier and easier and easier to almost the point where it's nothing at that point there. Now you want that when you're training eccentric because when that is lengthened, you want the load at the weakest. When it is shortened, you want the load at the hardest to start off with. Okay, so hard, as that muscle gets longer, easier, 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 easier. So like I said, probably go for a heavier band that you're using for isometric because you'll find that's too easy otherwise. Okay, especially if you've progressed. However, when you get to that point where it's going down and getting too easy and you want it hard at the bottom, then you have to go to something like this, which is your power band. So anchor that down low. Then what you do is put that on that foot and wrap it around so it doesn't come off. Pretty simple stuff. Now you have to go back enough. So when, when you're sort of down at that point, there's still some tension there. You don't want it obviously slack at that point. And remember, it's a longer band, so it's more forgiving than the shorter band. So at this point here, I want to go, well, how much lengthening do I need to do? So how far away from that is what you determine. Then you bring that up, okay? And what you do is you lift it up to that point, okay? So you're holding it there, ready to go. So I'm not using my hip flex for that point. Then I let that go down, holding it there, and then let that go, there's the isometric, and then lowering it down so there's still tension at the bottom, okay? Then what I'll have to do, half a sit up, pick it back up. It's a bit cumbersome because you have to sort of sit up every time you do it, but this way you get a lot more graduated tension and you still get tension at the bottom, okay? Into there, pull it up, into that point, and then slowly lower it down. Now, of course, the easiest progression for that when you're still on your back is just do concentric work. So from that point there, you're thinking, okay, if I can handle that, then what I'm gonna work on is the first thing you do is concentric, eccentric, okay? Just work on repetitions. And this way, you can actually go further forward into hip flexion as much as you can, you can go here without flattening your back and just work on that work to work on that hip flexor strengthening single leg, all right? If you find that's too easy, double up to get some more core work. So both legs up, but one has got the strengthening work. So there's your additional core work here, because remember, you're gonna engage a bit more here. It's gonna be better for your whole function. And then of course, you can add in dead bug if you want to too. So there's some nice progressions. Now, that's just floor stuff. What I would do is try and make you know, try and pass those tests and then go to standing because let's face it, standing is a way more functional for exercise. So at that point there, you could probably go back to this one, get used to using a hip flexor and standing. I'll show you my right one now. I think I've cooked my left one. So this one here, what you're gonna try and do now is balance on one leg, okay? And then lift up and down. Again, you're using hip flexor for hip flexion but it's much more functional. It's in a running type position. The good thing about this is you're using your whole other leg to stabilize. So when you go on the other side, don't even have to move the band, just go straight on the other side and away you go. Now, if you want to get sort of savvy with this, what I would aim for 
is doing a contralateral movement, okay, which gets your posterior sling working at the back. So if I'm standing on my left leg, when I come up, I want to be lifting my left arm, okay? And then back with my right, lift with my left, okay? So when I'm sort of pulling down with my right lat, I'm standing on my left leg, which is my left glute. So those two are connecting. So I want to be coming, you've got to get this sort of right, okay, lift your leg, lift your arm, good, opposites, and then up you come and down, and then power up to there. So then you can start getting some quick movements going on there, which are very dynamic, very fast movements, which is what more related to sport, gets you into that running sort of realm. So you can go from slow to quick movements, okay? Making sure you're up to speed with that. Now that's just the short band. If you want to go further into range, maybe you're looking at doing, returning to kicking, maybe it's, a, maybe it's been a kicking problem that you've had, flexor problems when you kick, go back to your long band. All right, so once you've got this back into here, I'll show you on this side. Again, wrap it around there. All right, so it's not gonna move. Work out where your hand is, okay? Right arm, left arm, right leg. So from here, you're gonna try and go all the way back and then come up and then balance it off. So really good for sport because you're trying to actually practice when you either sprint up hills, when you're running, when you're gonna say kick a ball, you're balancing on the other leg. All right, so get the hip flexor one going first, and then, then you can, so once you've got that phase working, you can sort of do what you please. You can start working on sport related stuff where you're kicking through, and getting some real strength going on there. Word of note with all this though, make sure you've done all your homework on the back, okay? That glute may be the cause of why you're getting hip flexor problems. So don't just think, oh, I've got a hip flexor problem, I've got to work on the front. You have to address the back, that's usually the primary cause. If you're having trouble with that, go see a physio, get that assessed and see if that weakness or problem going in there is why you're overloading your hip flexor. Give it a shot, see you next time.